Hello and welcome to another DIY installment from handmakemyday.com. Today we're replacing the wall plates on some old, old light switches that have been painted over. They're kind of crusty and nasty. So I'm going to put in new rocker switches at the same time. I've got some tricky cuts to make with some wall plates that need to butt up against some trim. I've got a way of doing it and I can't wait to show you because I just kind of fell upon this by mistake out of just pure frustration trying to cut these things with a Dremel tool. Let me show you how this is done. The first thing we want to do is select the right type of wall plate. Over here I have a nylon wall plate and over here I have a plastic wall plate. The difference in the two is about 20 cents at my local Home Depot, this one being more expensive. Now this makes a much better deal because it's way more durable. This one doesn't break, unbreakable, and this one shatters pretty easily. It doesn't take much to break that sucker in half. So, whereas this one, if you have kids or something, you can clearly see is not going to break very easily. But the catch is, it's also not very easy to cut. I tried using a Dremel tool on this originally to get a nice straight line out of it. And all I came up with, as you can see, is a wobbly, nasty line. What I want is something more like this. After a little bit of research and much frustration, I've come up with a way to cut these things that's fast and doesn't create any sawdust. So let's check it out. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need a combination square or a straight edge. I'll show you why the combination square works best here in a second. The actual gang plate, a box knife, the sharper the better, as you can see I already cut my finger by just opening the package for the box knife, a marking utensil, like a pencil, something that's erasable, and of course a pair of kitchen shears. Now these all play a critical role in this project, you'll see why. I've gone ahead and I've gone upstairs and I've taken I've overlaid this on the original switch cover and marked where I want to cut so it butts up against the door frame. Now what you could do is actually take the other switch cover off and just lay it on top and mark it, but I want to keep this as simple as possible and keep it clean so you can see everything and it's the best way to do it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my combination square and I'm going to line it up with those marks. And this is why a combination square works nicely is because you're going to get that straight edge to be square uh, versus uh, a random straight edge. You, you may come off with a not square cut, which would be just a real pain. Now you're going to take your box knife and be super careful here and just run over this a couple of times nice and light. You don't want to put too much pressure yet because what you want to do is focus on keeping the straight edge square so that's where you want to be putting your pressure. After you've made a nice groove, just go ahead and really dig into it and watch your fingers because if this thing slips you're going to be hurting. And In this case I use my wife's favorite cutting board. She's not home right now so that's going to work out real nice. And what you'll see is I have a score from mark to mark right there in the plate. Now instead of taking a saw and creating tons of sawdust I grab my kitchen shears and simply line it up on that mark and cut. Now watch this. This is so cool and it works great. It actually cuts very easily. As long as you take your time, you can just follow along and what you'll end up getting is a super straight cut and no mess, which is the best part because for a stupid little small project like this, you don't want to bust out a saw. You don't want to create a table the scraps everywhere and of course I didn't cut the end there too well but that's okay I just got to put a little more horsepower into it. There we go. You could actually take just a little bit of sandpaper and take those edges off if you want but if they don't bother you they certainly don't bother me and no one's really going to notice them. What I have now is a super straight edge that only took me literally seconds to set up and do. If you have 20 or 30 to do in your home you must have a big home but um, and you probably wouldn't be doing this yourself. This is the fastest way to do it that I've found. So nylon unbreakable wall plate covers work great and we'll go put it on that ugly 70's wall switch now. I've gone ahead and turned off the power via the uh, fuse box in the home to make sure that I'm not going to electrocute myself doing this. So there you go, I've already gone ahead and mounted it in place after a little bit of a fuss with the wires. I've turned the electricity back on at the fuse box and now we'll give it a shot. Everything looks good, works really well. What you can do is underneath there, there's a couple of screws. You can actually square this up a little bit. I'll do that um, after the video, but there you go. 
uh, how to cut a wall plate for light switches budget up against door trim at handmakemyday.com. Thanks.